You're listening to the 60th edition of the Bitochen Podcast. And you'll notice that I don't have a safer with me. And there's a few reasons for that. The first reason is I could not find the safer that we're reading from, the Sefer Betach Vashem. But I had a second safer, which I was actually here yesterday in this exact location, ready to film and record this podcast. But the battery of my, of my video camera was running very low and I was afraid I would start and I'll get back to yesterday soon. But today I left a safer that I was planning to use at home. I got to this location. I have a limited amount of time to be able to record this. I decided, you know, I'm going to talk about a specific topic in Bitochen, which has to do with looking for the signs of what it is that Hashem wants from us. Not always clear, not always easy to see, often blurry, often could be multiple ways of going, multiple paths. See the path? So, I'd like to talk about this topic in Bitochen. What does it mean to have trust in Hashem, to kind of look for, try to discern where it is that Hashem wants us to go? And in thinking about this, on the way here, which was about a 13-minute walk, so I'm reminded of Yosef HaTzadik. Yosef HaTzadik, he faces his brothers. There they are. He is now the ruler of Mitzrayim, right? He recognizes them, but they don't recognize him. And Yosef proceeds to run them through a very difficult challenge and pretends to be, doesn't say who he is, pretends to be someone else, wants to get Binyamin to come down, all the fortune explain. But there's, you know, it's hard to understand what Yosef is doing. Why is he doing this to his brothers? But if we think about this, and could be we've spoken about this in the past, if we think about it clearly, we can see that Yosef understood from the fact that he recognized them, but they didn't recognize him. He understood that there was a reason for it. There was a reason for it. Right? Yosef is the one who, first of all, is constantly talking about Hashem. He's constantly, Hashem's name is always on his lips, right? Excuse me, there's some flies and mosquitoes around. Right, so Yosef is somebody who is constantly looking to discern the, the hand of Hashem guiding him. And when he sees this unusual thing that he's not recognized, even though he recognizes them, he sees it as a direction from Hashem, that this is something that he needs to do. He needs to put them through a situation. He needs to use the fact that he's not recognized in order to accomplish something for his brothers, which, as I understand it, is to create a tikkun, or rectification for the sin that they had done selling him. And that is by standing up ultimately for Binyamin, when Yosef brings them back down. Now, when we look at that, we see that Hashem was guiding Yosef. Hashem was in Yosef's life. But it's not just Yosef. It's every one of us. It's every one of us. Hashem is constantly showing us signs of what He wants us to do. And it's not always crystal clear. Like that situation was very, very clear. But I'll give you an example that happened to me yesterday right here in this location. Besides for the fact that the battery on my camera was running out, which Baruch Hashem, I recharged the battery, so now we're, we're good to go. Besides for that, so I'm sitting here. Actually, I was planning to do it in a location not far, just right over there. But here I wanted you guys to see the beautiful path, because it's part of my story. I was sitting there, and um, I'm hearing like weird noises. Rah! Rah! Like that, that kind of noise. And I'm like... It doesn't sound good like there's people around here. Usually I'm here, I'm alone, there's nobody else around, go for a walk. You know, you have to be concerned sometimes for unsavory elements that you don't want to meet over here. So uh, I heard the noise, I'm like, my gut was telling me this is not a good idea, you should close up shop. Also I had set up this camera actually pretty much in this location, like on the road. And I was, I had it facing in that direction and uh, so I was like, what if people come through here, knock it down? It's happened to me before, what actually did happen right afterwards. But I decided to move my camera over, and then I decided, you know what, I think I should get out of here. But before I did, so first of all, a guy walked down through who looked 
a little unsavory. His head was covered with like uh, some kind of cloth and was hanging down. Uh, okay, people dress that way to protect themselves from the heat. But I keep hearing this noise. Uh, uh. And anyway, I debated what to do. I was getting ready to go. And then I look up the, I look up the road and I see that uh, there's a shepherd coming down with his flock of goat, goats. And there was a horse and there were a few dogs. And, uh, and this whole flock just basically came walking through this area, eating up all the stuff on the side, anything green, any foliage, and walked on through here. And I'm sitting over here, and, I, and as the um, Arab uh, shepherd walks by, I asked him, you know, is it okay? And there were, there were, all the animals were like surrounding me almost. I said, do I need to move? Should I be out of their way? And he's like, no, 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 you're fine. No, they won't bother you. And animals didn't bother me. I just watched them pass by. A massive trail of these animals. And just watched them eating stuff. And they went by and went down the, went down the road. And uh, one, of, one of the things I felt from experiencing that, and I was thinking about it on my way here now, was that, you know, you got to trust your intuition sometimes. Your intuition says, don't put the camera in the middle of the road. <laughs> Today my intuition didn't say that. Don't put the camera in the middle of the road. Listen to the intuition. I had an experience before where I had set up my camera on one of the other podcasts, and indeed a, a shepherd and his flock passed by pretty soon after I was done recording my podcast, but they could easily have passed by while I was in the middle of the podcast. So I had that experience. I looked at the past, and I had a certain feeling about the present. Same thing when I got here. I got out of my car and I realized I hadn't, bring, I hadn't brought the safer I planned to bring to use for this podcast. And I said, you know what? What's Hashem saying to me? Do I have what to say? I'm sure that I'll have what to say. I'll have something to speak about. And here we are talking about this topic. And it's an important topic because Hashem guides us. Sometimes it's very clear. Like with Yosef, it was very clear to him. Something was really unusual that's going on here. All right? Um... We can see it in our lives. We can look around in our lives. We can see something. You know, right now, uh, I was asked by a radio station in Israel to uh, create a music show for an hour a day, four days a week, from Sunday through Wednesday. A very popular Haredi station called Coldplay. And I was debating, should I do this? Um, it's not a paying job, but, you know, you're in front of a very big audience, get seen, get heard. You choose the songs. I can say whatever I want. I can choose the songs, let's say, talking about Vitochen. I can stick in a word here, a word there on topics of chizik, and, you know, I can say whatever I want. So it's a very interesting opportunity. And I wasn't sure what to do. And I'm always looking. I'm always, my eyes are always open, looking, okay, what does Hashem want me to do? What is, what is, where is Hashem guiding me? And I can't speak about the specifics of it, but it has started to become clear that this seems to be what Hashem wants me to do. And it's like you're walking down this path. You're walking down the path of life. And you're walking and you're walking and you're walking and all of a sudden you see, hey, where am I going? And, you know, the animals in the back, the sheep, the goats or whatever, the horse in the back, the dog actually was all the way in the back. The animals in the back don't see the shepherd. They don't necessarily know exactly where they're going. They don't need to know. That's not their job. Animals don't need to know as long as there's a shepherd. Right? So, but the animals in the back follow what's going on in front of them. That doesn't mean, of course, wherever the river flows, that's where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. It does, that's not what this means. But what it does mean is that if a person is striving and looking for and trying to find, where does Hashem want me to go? That's the question I'm always asking. Where does Hashem want me to go? And I'm not talking about an obsessive question. Like, what am I supposed to do now? What do I do now? So there are answers to that kind of question as well. You know, working now with a, uh, with a coach and uh, we're writing out, I was asked to write out lists of things, lists of things to do, lists of things that I would like to accomplish. Right there's a place for that as well, of course. And we need to have a broader vision for ourselves. We need to know where personally we want to go. We need to have goals. These are all important. 
But then the question is also, where is Hashem bringing us? Because sometimes what we think is good for us, or what we think is right for us, or what we think we want, Hashem says no. It's very interesting. Uh, I had an experience this morning in shul, with davening, in a shul called Masas Mordechai, which is like a shtiblach. And yet I'm happening one after another. And in the middle of Shemun Esrei, I hear yelling outside of the door. There's yelling. Someone's yelling at the top of their lungs. Ah, oh, yelling. What's going on? It wasn't clear to me. I don't know. And I'm not going outside. I'm in the middle of davening. Once, twice, three times, a few times during, during Shemun Esrei, the guy was yelling. And after davening, this guy comes into the room. He has a piece of paper in his hand and he's trying to convince people, maybe legitimately so, it's a particular grocery store in our neighborhood. Some of the grocery stores employ Jewish workers. This particular store employs Arab workers, and the Arabs who work there are not exactly, you know, the highest class citizens. And uh, with what's been going on in Eretz Yisrael of late, so there's been an unruly element. Someone told me that they heard first from, a, from someone who was there. So I'm, I'm third hand, but he heard it from the first hand that... Uh, somebody from this particular grocery store was removed because he was planning to do something. There's been all kinds of weird things going on. But this guy who came into shul was yelling outside of the shul for a while already, a month or maybe a month and a half, has been trying to convince people not to go to the grocery store. Don't go there. He hasn't been able to convince any of their abonim to sign on to his thing. He has two people who I think are not in the community. doesn't matter. Not the point. What is the point is that I, what I saw in this person was that, he, and he explained why didn't he yell, he wanted to get our attention. He felt like the only way to get people to, to listen to what he had to say was to yell outside the door, at the top of his lungs, that's the only way that he had to yell. And I was discussing this with somebody else right afterwards, and uh, they were saying how this person, until recently when he became very concerned and, uh, trying to do something about the situation, he was a regular guy, a regular guy. But he, he became, it seems he became obsessive about it. I was thinking about like, what's the idea of that? What, how does that happen? And I think that comes from us trying to control a situation that's really out of our control. This person has been to the owner of the grocery store trying to convince him to get rid of his Arab workers, etc. And but But it became an obsession. It became like he needs to he needs to fix this problem. And of course, we need crusaders. We need people who are willing to take something on. But the mistake, I think, and this is an important point, and it's connected to what we're talking about, the mistake is, who's in, who's in charge of this? Am I in charge of this? Is Hashem in charge of this? Who's in charge of this? Once had a, a situation that I was dealing with, a particularly difficult uh, situation with whatever the exact circumstances are, it's not important. I was dealing with a difficult person who had a, a position of power over me and was, in my opinion, abusing that power. And I discussed it with a certain Rav who agreed with me. A few other Rabbanim agreed with me, but there was nothing to do. And he said, you know, part of, part of what the Jewish people has to go through in Golis is dealing with difficult people, difficult challenges. And we need to know Part of what we have to go through in life will be a challenge or a difficulty. And there's, Hashem shows us, Hashem looks at us, and, or we need to look at the situations that we're in and we need to ask ourselves, why am I hitting a dead end? Why am I hitting a brick wall? What's that about? That's a surefire sign, not always, but it's a good indicator that that's not where Hashem wants me to go. It's not where Hashem wants me to go. Hashem has a different plan for me. Hashem wants my daughter to be not in that school, but in a school that's better for her, which is what happened. So we don't know where we're going exactly, but Hashem shows indicators when there are certain things that are unusual, certain things that are like, what's that? What's that about? That's a good sign. That's a good sign. It's like the story that I, that I told you guys about uh, one, of the, one of the members of our Bitochen group, the latest group, who was debating what to do, should her son go out with this particular girl? And she turned on the thing, she turned on the, on the Bitochen podcast, and there was 
There on the Mitochon podcast was the story about her son in Eretz Yisrael that I happened to say because, as I've mentioned before, as because the first time the camera wasn't on and the second time this story came into my head. It didn't come in on the first time. So signs like that, that's Hashem showing me when something is unlikely, when something happens that's unlikely, that Yosef at Tzadik sees, it doesn't make sense that his brothers don't recognize him. He looks exactly like them. He looks like Binyami. He looks like his father. He doesn't rec- they don't recognize him. They don't... Some, that's an unlikely scenario. Is a good symbol that this is not this is or is not the way to go. You, you're hitting a brick wall. Maybe that's not the right way to go. Of course, it's a good idea to discuss these kinds of things with Rabbanim, with mentors, with spiritual guides. But we also, this is something that I've heard from my Rosh Hashiva many a time, we make, we, we make our own decisions in life. Even if we get advice from others, we make our own decisions in life. We are accountable for our decisions. We can't blame them on anybody else. We make our decisions and we ultimately have to look and see and try to determine where is it that Hashem is sending us? What is the direction that He wants me to go? If I only have a certain limited amount of time to work on this podcast and I couldn't find the safer, the safer that I had planned to bring, I left at home, there's not enough time for me to go back there and get it. What do I do? Can't give up on the slot. Today, I'm filming this, this is, it's Tuesday. Try to film it by Tuesday, get it up. And um, so wh- what is Hashem trying to say to me? Maybe Hashem is saying to me, talk about what's going on. Talk about what you're experiencing. Talk from your own heart. Maybe that's what people need to hear. Maybe that's what you need to hear today. I was grateful to experience today. I picked up my daughter, which I don't usually do. My, my wife usually does it, but my wife's involved in something else. So I went to pick up my daughter from a tutor. And one of the people who listens, I didn't know, but one of the people who listens and watches this podcast uh, is my daughter's tutor's husband. And uh, I really appreciated it. I didn't know. I had no idea. But I really appreciated it when he told me. Give me the feedback that he gained something from this podcast. That is always, you know, that's just a little thing. But that's also a, a reminder for me. Hey, I got to do this podcast. This is something that's important to me. I know this is something that's having an, an impact on others. So there's so many things to look for. So many ways that Hashem guides us. And sometimes it's just really simple. I feel this is right for me. This, is, this feels right for me. It feels right for me to do a Be Talking podcast once a week. It feels right for me to do a, a Parsha podcast. It feels right for me to be learning Gemara in the morning, to be working on music, to be creating music. It feels right. And even the things that I have resistance to, like let's say doing a radio show four days a week, even something like that, the circumstances around it might be saying, hey, this is the thing that you're supposed to do. Someone just told me how they moved recently, five weeks ago, they moved to or six weeks ago as of today, because I had this conversation a week ago almost, they moved to Ramat Pichemesh, to my area, from somewhere in Canada. And uh, they came in, they had no idea what to expect. And they're seeing where to go. They're, they, they planted themselves in one location, then they had to move on to a different location. They thought they were going to go to that location, but in the end, they ended up somewhere else. But I saw from speaking to him, that there was a sense that Hashem is guiding. You don't know why. You don't know exactly what's going on. You don't know exactly, of course, it's not clear. But there are hints. We need to look for the hints. We need to ask Hashem to show us what is it that you want from me. And if this is what you want from me, show me how to do it. Help me succeed at it. If you want me to do a radio program, help me do it right. I'm going to ask you, Hashem. I'm going to pray. I'm going to daven. Please help me do it right. I'm going to make a Kiddush Hashem. As someone in the Bitochen group said, uh, this is an opportunity to serve Hashem through this. Talk about Bitochen. Play songs of Bitochen on the radio. You know, this is an opportunity. How can I serve Hashem in this? What does Hashem want from me in this situation? That's a question I need to ask myself. And with that, we're almost at 20 minutes, but I want to say 
I try to keep this to 20 minutes to be talking podcasts. But I want to say just one last thing, and that is the power of the group. I want to remind you the importance and the power of a group working on Bitochen. There's a ladies group, which is meeting every single week. Join the group. There's a men's group. If you can join us, we're working on it together. There's so much to be gained by being part of a group, thinking about, talking about, it's on our minds, discussing it. There's also a Bitochen WhatsApp group for those who are part of the the uh, the for the men the zoom zoom group i don't know if the women have done something like that but there's a whatsapp group and this is something that we develop a, a sense of bitachon of faith in hashem a sense of where is hashem guiding us where is hashem leading us it's a something this is something that we develop by talking about it by experiencing it by reviewing it by talking about it by experiencing it by reviewing it and that conversation is what brings us to our, to our next level in Bitochen. So I invite you, you can send me an email to arigoldwag at gmail.com or to Group at gmail.com. I check both of those emails. And uh, if you want to be in the women's group, we'll send you to the women's group. If you want to be in the men's group, I'll respond to you. And I thank you so much for listening. We'll see you again next time.